Hey everyone, I'm Richard, and a little while back I was in New York attending the PlayStation meeting where I got my first look at the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, I went into the event sort of skeptical about its ability to run games at 4K resolution. After all, a while back I stacked up a very similar PC GPU to the Pro's, ran it at a bunch of high-end resolutions on a range of games and while some results were okay others well they weren't very impressive at all but i actually came out of the event optimistic about the pros chances having actually seen the hardware in action now we can compare the results of the new hardware against a high-end 4k pc and yes you can ask the question about whether this is strictly speaking actually a 4k games machine but there's one thing you sort of need to keep in mind with the pro its price point 400 dollars now to my mind this is absolutely crucial to its chances so let's think about that price point for a second. It's $100 more than the freshly minted PS4 Slim. And for that, you get a 2.3x boost to graphics power, double the hard drive space, faster RAM, and a 31% increase to CPU clocks. Now we can debate the weaknesses of the hardware for as long as you want. And yes, we'll do that later on. But the bottom line is that anyone buying a new PlayStation this holiday season is gonna be nuts to pick the older unit when the Pro offers a huge spec boost for just $100 more. The value here is even more remarkable when you consider that the one terabyte Xbox One S, well, the Pro is only $50 more. I mean, if you don't need a UHD Blu-ray drive, basically the Pro, well, it's a no-brainer. But fundamentally, what does it actually deliver in gameplay terms? Well, it's all going to come down to developer support, of course, but as for Sony itself, it seems to be treating the Pro as the means by which it's going to scale up its existing PS4 titles to look good on 4K screens. So let's take Guerrilla Games' beautiful Horizon Zero Dawn as an example. Now, last week, we ran a preliminary frame rate test based on the media Sony distributed to the press. And yeah, it's essentially the same 30 FPS engine simply scaled up to 4K res. There are a few performance dips here and there, but remember that the game isn't out for five months, so there is optimization time left. But the point is that the ballpark performance target is the same as the standard PS4 version. It's just running at a much higher resolution. How much higher? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Now, previously, I've talked about next-gen upscaling, where Sony aims to tap into cutting-edge techniques used to scale up pixel counts in order to service a 4K screen. One in particular clearly has Sony's focus, the 2x2 checkerboard. The idea here is that for every 2x2 pixel structure, a 4x4 block is extrapolated out. So 4K is essentially a 4x boost to 1080p resolution, right? What the checkerboard technique allows developers to do is to create a 4K frame buffer from half as many pixels, 2x 1080p in effect. So how does it look? Well, it's kind of hard to show you that because all of the 4K media Sony has released so far, well, to be frank, it's been a bit rubbish. High bandwidth downloads are required to show 4K at its best. However, we do have some Horizon screenshots taken directly from the dev kit that we can pour over. Okay, so this is a 1080p video you're watching now. If you've got it running at full screen on a full HD screen, then this is what you can expect to see from the PS4 Pro when it's connected to your display. It's still rendering a 4K image, but it's downscaling to fit your screen. It's a process called super sampling, and it's kind of like a brute force form of anti-aliasing. Now it can look striking and there's a huge reduction in jaggies and shimmer in motion. It's neat, but by zooming in 200%, we get a one-to-one -one pixel map with the actual 4K output. And this shot in particular is interesting because you usually see a bunch of stair-step artifacts on edges like this that get emphasized by conventional upscaling. But Horizon works out pretty well, actually, even as we zoom in still further. The image, yeah, it is generally softer than an actual native 4K image, but I saw Gorilla's 1080p comparisons in real time, and the resolution boost here is simply terrific. But what seems clear is that the PS4 Pro has a number of upscaling techniques available. 
or at the very least, the scaler can work from varying base resolutions. So take a look at Mass Effect Andromeda, for example. Now, to be clear, we're going to have to review our pixel counting techniques with PS4 Pro software, but in the here and now, it does seem to be resolving at around 1800p resolution, and the edges there kind of look strange similar to what we've seen on other titles using temporal reconstruction, the process of upscaling via information derived from previous frames or via some multi-sampling trickery. But once again, I saw this game running on a 65-inch Sony Z9D series HDR screen. Whether it's 4K or not, it's still a vast increase in definition over standard 1080p. If it is 1800p, well, that's kind of like the 4K equivalent of 900p on a full HD screen. It's not 100% ideal, but it's hardly been a deal breaker for Xbox One games. And yeah, another similar example, but seemingly without any new upscaling technique is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Now we've got just one screenshot here, but if you look at the neon signs here, you'll note a pretty standard jagged edge in line with standard upscaling. Now this title runs at 1080p on the standard PS4. Pixel counting actually gives us a 3360 by 1890 resolution here. Now, there will be native 4K games, of course. For example, Naughty Dog's The Last of Us Remaster is getting an upgrade for PS4 Pro that allows you to play at 30 FPS at native 4K or else 60 FPS at a lower resolution. Now that's going to be interesting to check out, but I think generally speaking, the point is that Sony is using clever technology to make the PlayStation 4 Pro punch above its weight visually. Fundamentally, the level of GPU power we have here is good for doubling resolution compared to PS4, not quadrupling it for 4K, but Sony's approach is to treat UHD screens more as a canvas for an improved PS4 experience, as opposed to a hard and fast resolution that must be maintained at all times. Times. And based on what I saw, the quality of the results can vary. For example, Rise of the Tomb Raider here does look quite soft compared to a native 4K presentation, but the point is that it's clearly a substantial leap over standard 1080p, which is what you get with a standard PS4 hardware. And of course, there's HDR2. Now, obviously, I can't really show you HDR as such because A, YouTube doesn't have an HDR delivery system, and B, the chances are you don't have an HDR screen. But one thing I wanted to show you is that this technology isn't just about more vibrant natural color, it's also about detail. Okay, so let me explain. This is a standard game screenshot. Well, what I'm doing now is to constrict the color range. Now, let's be clear. The resolution of the image, the basic pixel count, that is not changing. It's still 1080p. However, as I reduce the color range, detail simply disappears. Okay, so let's reverse that and bring us back to full range. And now imagine what happens if that slider could be pushed out still further that we could continue to expand the color range. More vibrant imagery, more detail. It would be pretty awesome, but that obviously requires a more high-end display to pair with a PS4 Pro. And that's something that we'll be looking at in due course. So yeah, I went into the PlayStation meeting with a pretty good idea of the PS4 Pro spec and also with a basic outline of the upscaling strategies and resolutions that Sony was looking at. But actually seeing the results, well, with Horizon and Days Gone in particular, I'm impressed. And the point is this, even if it's not native 4K, it doesn't need to be to show a big increase in quality over 1080p. And if it doesn't feel like the kind of revolution we want from a new console, well, remember, PS4 Pro is just $100 more than the standard PS4, a small price boost for a big quality increase. Now, if there is disappointment, well, it's seemingly that 1080p 60 isn't the primary target here. And in many respects, that is a shame. So a few days back, we published this video using Uncharted 4's slow motion mode to simulate 1080p 60 gameplay as it would look if the horsepower was available to run it in real time. And it looks pretty awesome, right? Well, that's not what we're gonna get with the Pro in many cases. The primary purpose of the machine seems to be about running PS4 engines at similar performance levels, maybe with more consistent frame rates, but at much higher resolutions. If you're looking to stick to 1080p gaming and you want 60 FPS and you're not fussed about system exclusives, then yeah, my advice would be to move on to PC. That's what it does best. But what I will say is that developers do have the choice to utilize PS4 Pro power as they see fit. And that's why Rise of the Tomb Raider actually has three different rendering modes. A 1080p 30 option with all the eye candy, 
an unlocked frame rate which apparently gives us 40 to 60 fps action plus of course the 4k mode you're seeing here but there is an interesting point here if tomb raider can run at 4k at 30 fps why can't it run at 1080p at a locked 60. well i suspect that this is all about the game's cpu requirement Tomb Raider on PC can max a modern i5 pretty easily in certain levels and in terms of pure grunt, even the 2.1 GHz upclock to the Jaguars in PS4 Pro still leaves them way behind the power level of a modern Intel quad-core processor. And there's also a question of developer resources. The Sony staff I saw at the PlayStation meeting aren't investing a huge amount of manpower into pro support. From their perspective, it's all about getting the base PS4 engine right, then using the Pro for scalability to higher resolutions along with a more stable frame rate. Now, maybe that will change in future, but right now, well, with over 40 million users, the original PS4 has to take point for development efforts. So even if we're happy with the resolution count, even if we're resigned to game frame rates remaining in much the same area, are there actually any weaknesses to the PlayStation 4 Pro design? Well, I'd like to pinpoint one area of concern, memory. The machine itself has the same eight gigs of GDDR5 found in the original PS4, and this presents a problem. It means that the top tier texture work found in 4K optimized PC titles today may not find their way into the PS4 Pro versions. Generally speaking, it's not gonna be game breaking as such, but there will be scenes like this one in Tomb Raider which don't look quite the same without access to that top tier artwork. And potentially that could be a big contrast with Microsoft's Project Scorpio. The initial spec there has a six teraflop GPU versus the Pro's 4.2 teraflops, and it's got much, much higher memory bandwidth. And this motherboard shot strongly suggests that we're looking at 12 gigs of memory here versus the Pro's eight. So yeah, we all mocked Microsoft's Scorpio trailer for its talk of the highest quality pixels, but well, when you look at the increase in visual quality at 4K that more memory offers via artwork optimized for the resolution, well, maybe they have a point. But that's a discussion for another time. We'll be back really soon with more PS4 Pro videos. But in the meantime, if you found this one useful, do like and subscribe and check out our channel for more exclusive PS4 Pro content. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.